Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. A stranded FedEx driver rescued by a rancher on a horse. A snow-covered freeway forcing a 50-mile shutdown. A huge tree crashing down on cars. Yes, this was your day in San Diego County. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Pena. And I'm Derek Stallin for Steve Atkinson. We've got team coverage of the storm that's caused a lot of headaches. Let's start with 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala in the Tijuana River Valley, where a road has been flooded for hours. Mimi? And Derek, Lindsay, the water has receded quite a bit, but drivers are still going through it right now. It is still unsafe at this point. You could even see someone down there actually paddling around, having some fun with this flooding. Now, there are also many ranches in this area full of horses, and today one of those horses actually came to the rescue. I mean, we got a lot of sand. We tried to build the property up and, and stuff, but there's not really much you can do. It's Mother Nature, you know. And Mother Nature is causing quite a bit of problems as floodwaters turn dry land into pools. Every winter, the same thing down here. So, but specifically this year because we just don't have a break. This is a look at Hollister Street near Monument Road in the Tijuana River Valley. People who have horses in the area, like Dorter Drescher, prepared by building up their properties with sand to keep the water out and away from their animals. Ground is saturated, so. And it always it always collects right here, but it's much worse than it usually is. So bad that a FedEx driver got stuck on the flooded road while trying to make a delivery at a nearby ranch. The driver tells me he was stranded for about 45 minutes, but luckily a man on a horse came to the rescue, pulling the driver onto the horse, bringing him to safety. Over in Bonita, a golf course was pretty much underwater. What's normally a green grassy area was a soggy lake Thursday. The rain causing rivers and creeks to overflow across the county. In Spring Valley, road close signs popped up once again on Quarry Road. And this isn't the end. Although the worst of the storm is over, more flooding is still possible as showers continue through the night. We love this area down here. It's beautiful like 10 months out of the year. And this is when it's, this is the price we pay. And there have been quite a few close calls here today. A reminder that it only takes about 12 inches of rushing water to carry away most cars and two feet for SUVs and trucks. We're live in the Tijuana River Valley. Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Thank you, Mimi. Flooded streets cause problems for drivers all morning. Two cars stalled while trying to pass through the flooded road on Midway Drive between Barnett and Rosecrans. It was a similar scene over in Grantville. One driver sat in his window waiting to be rescued after getting stuck. And just feet away, another car was partially submerged in water. Rescue crews helped the two men inside walk to higher ground. The lure of snow is drawing huge crowds to the mountains as people brave tricky driving conditions to get there. 10 News reporter Jennifer Kastner battled her way to Julian and she's live for us now. And Jen, this is big business for a tiny town. Derek, Lindsay, even right now, five o'clock at night when it's getting dark out, there's still a ton of people here in Julian walking around, enjoying the town, getting caramel apples, getting some dinner, doing some window shopping. A lot of people having a wonderful day. There's a lot of snow that's melted, but there's still a few inches on the ground, enough to make snowballs and snowmen, which we saw a lot of today. The small town of Julian flooded with tourists Thursday looking for a winter wonderland. It's been a really busy day. Everybody's been in really good spirits. Teak Nichols of Mom's Bakery closed the doors early after nearly selling out of pies. I think it was around 200. We're doing a lot of good business. The cider's on. Local shops packed and thrilled about it. It's a great day. Lots of people coming around, everybody having fun, everybody being respectful. It was really fun actually. A long trip, but it was worth it. For many families, the toughest part was sitting in traffic to get here. An overnight storm left a blanket of snow. Travelers were eager to come see it. He was really nervous driving in the snow, but I told him I, I've driven it in my Mini Cooper, so <laughs> he's got the big truck out there. Let's go, Kiana. Ready? Yeah. Woo yeah. <laughs> a perfect day for snowball fights, snowman, and we have our snow dinosaur and his name is Gary. So a lot of people having fun today, which is so good to see, but I will warn you the traffic to get out of here. 
is nasty. You can see the long line of cars and it's not getting any better. The snow right now is very light. It will continue to clear up overnight. Reporting live in Julian, Jennifer Kastner, 10 News. All right, thanks, Jen. I'm still hoping for pie. Maybe you should bring me some pie. Other Jen here has <laughs> been tracking the storm that's mostly moved out, but it's still lingering in some parts of the county. What can we expect, Jen? Yeah, so for the most part, it has moved out, Lindsay, but we still have a couple showers lingering in our forecast for tonight. Right now on our radar, we see one more band that's moving in to our coastline, started in North County, but it is making its way to the southeast, so we are anticipating more rainfall towards La Jolla, Pacific Beach, Mission Beach, and into downtown San Diego within the next hour or two, and a chance for a thunderstorm uh, off our coastal waters as of right now, but that is making its way into San Diego County, and this is really going to be the last of what we're anticipating seeing. The bulk of that storm arrived very early this morning, is now making its way east into portions of Arizona, but we did get some impressive totals. 10 inches of snow in Palomar Mountain, 8 in Julian today, Ranchita, 4 inches there, 2 inches in Pine Valley, and an inch and a half of rain in Ocean side so anything that we do get tonight will be relatively light but we have another storm on the way i'm tracking all of that coming up in your seven day forecast all right jen thanks for that travel has been tricky interstate 8 is now back open tonight but that wasn't the case for much of the morning a lot of drivers got stranded trying to go east when 50 miles of the 8 got shut down because of snow 10 news reporter cassie carlisle was there for the chaos and the reopening cassidy People were absolutely thrilled about the reopening and you can see it's been open all day. It is very, very chilly out here as the sun goes down and we see a couple dark ominous clouds coming our way, making it pretty tricky and dangerous for those trying to travel back to Arizona. It was a white day after Christmas in Alpine and that beautiful snow snarled traffic shutting down the I-8 just before 9 a.m. CHP said 15 to 20 cars were stuck in the snow or off the road. Cars slowed to a crawl near Viejas Casino. Sky 10 showed the miles long backup. Well, we uh, spent a wonderful Christmas in Coronado and got up early to head to Tucson to go play tennis. And this is as far as we made it, so. Drivers lined the shoulders of Willows Road where traffic funneled off the freeway. Everyone waiting and hoping. Trying to get to work by 10 and I've been sitting here. Oh, what's <laughs> killing us? Just sitting here relaxing. Locals know the trouble winter weather can bring through the pass. It's been bad and I've seen a lot of cars crash and stuff to, you know, times. People get too much of a hurry. Trying to be positive while parked. I was wishing that this had a big Hallmark movie thing and we could have a Hallmark movie marathon on the side of the road. Their optimism paid off just before 11. Met with joy by travelers. Signs on the way up to the pass said to bring change. So if you are heading this way and you have them, definitely make sure to bring them so you can be extra safe this evening. Reporting live here in Alpine, Cassie Carlisle, 10 News. All right, thanks, Cassie. Meanwhile, drivers remain stuck on the grapevine north of Los Angeles tonight. The five freeway is closed in that area because of heavy snow. The highway patrol says a driver was found dead inside a big rig on the grapevine this morning. The cause of death has not been announced. It's not yet clear when the grapevine will reopen. One piece of good news, though, I-5 in the Cajon Pass is now back open. Well, it's a sound you never hope to hear, a large tree crashing into your property. But that exact noise woke a National City family up overnight. They tell 10 News reporter Amanda Brandeis, while the city cleared out some of the debris, the mess is far from cleaned up. So, so this happened. Roots that once held this tree down are now exposed, leaving behind shattered glass and broken headlights. I landed in my car, two of my vehicles. So. Nancy Alvarado lives in the National City home with her family. In the front, the wheel sh windshield is cracked and all the hood is pretty much jammed up. <laughs> A heart shattering end to their Christmas. Yeah, I use them to go to San Diego State University and well, that's the only thing I can use to go to school and work. 
City workers cleared tree debris from the road, but did not remove the tree from the cars. Hours later, they're still there. It's going to cost a lot of money for sure. According to the City of National City's website, the Park Division only maintains trees in the city's parkways, medians, and public parks, not trees on a resident's property. So here are all the roots. But the family says it is thankful for one thing. Yeah, we're very glad that it landed on the vehicles instead of our house. But still, it's still damaged and they're still pretty sad about it. It's a view from her bedroom. Alvarado hopes she won't have to look at much longer. Amanda Brandeis, 10 News. Making matters worse, the family says their auto insurance doesn't cover that type of accident. sdg &E says a power outage downtown was likely weather related. Some 1500 customers lost power around 1015 this morning and the power wasn't fully restored until about two hours later. The impacted areas included Balboa Park, Golden Hill and Center City. A power company spokesman says rain may have seeped into an electrical substation. Well, 10 News is all over the weather whenever it happens, and you can stay on top of the weather, too, by downloading our free 10 News mobile app. You can access the Pinpoint Doppler and check out all of our video forecasts. We have a developing story out of Oceanside where police are looking for a missing man. 62-year-old Paul Mickelson was last seen at 3 a.m. at an Oceanside home he was visiting. He is 6 foot 2, 250 pounds, and was driving a white Honda CRV. We're told he has medical conditions that require a caretaker. Call Oceanside Police if you see him. Now to the impeachment battle. President Trump took to Twitter again today to blast the Democrats, who he says are treating him unfairly. As ABC's Inez de la Cutara reports, this comes as cracks may be beginning to show in Republican solidarity. Go ahead. Thank you. Everybody. President Trump still on holiday in Florida, but still fuming over impeachment, firing off a new string of attacks on Democrats this morning blasting House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, slamming her California district and criticizing her for threatening to delay his Senate trial by withholding articles of impeachment from the Senate. She hates the Republican Party. She hates all of the people that voted for me and the Republican Party. Pelosi is refusing to take the next steps in the impeachment process, explaining in a letter to her colleagues, it now remains for the Senate to present the rules under which we will proceed. Democrats are pushing to have new witness testimony and documents as part of the president's trial, but Republicans already indicated they're likely to reject those requests. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell telling Fox News he'll work hand in hand with the president. But we'll be working through this process, hopefully in a fairly short period of time, in total coordination uh, with the White House Counsel's Office. A member of McConnell's own party now distancing herself from those comments. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, a moderate Republican, expressing her concerns on KTUU TV. When I heard that, I was disturbed. To me, it means that we have to take that step back from being hand in glove with the defense. Murkowski becoming the first Republican to publicly voice those concerns. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the two sides are at an impasse and that he doesn't expect much progress until after lawmakers return from recess in the new year. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington.